point. Um, nobody told me today was neon day, so I apologize if we're doing the exact opposite of neon. But um, just a quick question: Who is interested in physical therapy as a career? Show of hands, anyone? Okay, one. Hopefully, we have more than that after this talk. Um, who's had therapy in this room? Sports injuries. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully, a good experience. I think I recognize your dad's a therapist. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, so just a little bit about myself. Let's see if I can work this first of all. So I'm currently the director of uh, therapy at Bowman Joint Clinic. I've uh, been there three years. They've had a uh, physical therapy program, uh, physical therapy services there. Um, I've worked in outpatient orthopedics for about 18 of my years. I started out in a nursing home uh, when I first graduated. That was in Sheboygan. Uh, lasted there three months because of Medicare cuts. I was concerned about my job and uh, went to work at a hospital where I uh, worked for two years uh, in a hospital setting and then eventually transitioned to outpatient. Um, I've also worked in home health care as well. Uh, that's traveling to people's homes uh, to do some therapy. Uh, so I, I kind of had a little bit of a mix of everything. The, the one thing I can for sure say I haven't done is pediatrics. Uh, definitely not my specialty. Um, I graduated from Marquette in 1998, so I've been doing this about 23 years now. Um, I have my master's degree. I was one of the first groups to go through as a, a master's degree at that college. Um, I knew I wanted to be a therapist in sixth grade. I know it sounds odd, um, but I did a, a book report in sixth grade on athletic injuries and it really kind of interested me. Um, and one of my teachers kind of just said, well, this may be something you want to go into. And uh, lucky for me, uh, I stuck with it throughout high school and uh, it's become my career that I enjoy. Um, so now programs have shifted. Um, shortly after I graduated, they shifted to a doctorate program. So a little bit more education. It, it resulted in about a half year more education uh, for therapists. Uh, the typical program is six to seven years, depending on the school. Um, there are some schools that offer like a direct admit program. That's, that was the, one of the big reasons I chose Marquette. It, it is somewhat competitive to get into PT school. Um, not quite as much as med school, but it's close. It depends on where you go. Um, I knew freshman year of college that after my three years of prerequisites, I was in the program. If you go to a school like La Crosse, UW-Madison, you have to do three years of your prerequisites, hope you do good enough in the grades, and hope you, hope you can separate yourself from the other people applying that you get into the program. So. Uh, for me, it just made it more comfortable. I would say I wasn't as bright to get in at my third year in college, so I was glad I was in that freshman year. Um, but it, it, uh, it, right away, I knew I was going to get the degree I wanted. Um, after you graduate, you have to pass a board exam, and then uh, also pass a state licensure exam. Usually that process takes about, well, under non-COVID times, takes about four weeks. Uh, we're finding it takes about two to three months right now. Uh, therapy schools have increased significantly over the last 20 years. Um, it's in high demand. It's, it's good for these colleges because they get an ad, they get a, a student for six years. Um, lacrosse is, is one of the programs that's been around for the longest time, and as much as I hate to say it, they're probably one of the best programs in the state. Um, I think Marquette's right there, but UW Lacrosse is kind of known for their therapy program. Uh, Carroll University in Waukesha, I don't know if anybody's familiar with that, that's a private college. Um, UW Milwaukee has a newer program, but it's newer, I mean, 10 years. Uh, UW Madison has been around for a while. Concordia, which is just north of Milwaukee, again, a private school. And then uh, UWSP has been working on developing their PT program. Um, I don't know when exactly their start date is, but I, I believe it's in the next year or two. They're kind of developing their program, getting their faculty. So there'll be somebody locally here that will have that program. Um, again, all of these, except for Marquette and Carroll, also does do a direct admit program. Uh, the amount of people, students they, that they really allow access to, so Marquette is 80 students per year. When I was in college, the amount of people that applied for the program was more than 10,000. So that's pretty competitive. Um, I don't think it's quite as tight anymore because we've they've developed more schools, so there's more opportunities for students. Um, but it's still uh, a very competitive uh, field to get into. Uh, my suggestion always to people that are interested in 
um, going into physical therapy school, don't always put the top schools at the top of your list. It's okay to graduate from a Carroll College or any other school. The big thing I look at as, as a director when I'm hiring students is, do you have a diploma from a PT school? Um, yes, there's some differences, but the big thing is getting into the school. You'll continue to develop your skills once you graduate, but um, the better schools, it's, it's more competition, and some people get discouraged by that. <coughs> educational costs. So, it's estimated the average educational costs are about seventy-five to ninety thousand dollars in in-state school. So, UW Madison, UW La Crosse. Private schools, it can cost upwards of $150,000. That doesn't include housing and food costs. Um, my school education, again, I'm an old guy in this field now. Uh, when I started, it was $9,000 to go to Marquette. By the time I finished, it was $15,000 or $16,000, so that was in 1998. Um, last I heard, their per-year tuition is in the $40,000 range. Why does that matter? because of what we get paid as therapists. And I'll mention that in the near future here, but it's just looking at college costs versus pay. Um, so, what does a physical therapist do? I looked it up on APTAs, our, our organization, American Physical Therapy Association, and they define it as movement experts who improve the quality of life through prescribed exercise, hands-on care, and patient education. Um, I don't know if I consider myself uh, as a movement expert, per se. Um, we see people of all ages. So there's birth to three programs. So as early as birth, literally, um, some, for some premature um, babies, there's a therapist there within a day uh, that's working with them um, with desensitization techniques, things like that. Um, birth to three usually also entails going to the home, helping new mothers with a uh, child if they're having some issues. Um, but we, we see also on the older end of the spectrum that these people that may be in a nursing home that needs, needs some care. Um, what I basically do as a physical therapist is a patient comes to me and I get a script usually from a physician that says this patient has right shoulder pain or right knee pain, whatever it may be. It's my job to evaluate or assess their injury. So. One of the things we do is we sit down with them first and take a history. How did you hurt it? Where does it hurt? When does it hurt? Anything that you did prior to this, any issues you had with this? Um, can you do your job? Can you do your sport? So we kind of do a little bit of a, uh, a question answer kind of thing with them. Um, then we also take measurements. So if somebody came in for a shoulder um, injury, we measure how far can they move their arm in different directions. And we compare that to their good side. Let's say their left side moves much better. Um, and we have to document everything as we go. We do muscle testing. So we want to get like a baseline of where they're at in terms of their function. And then we kind of do some special tests. We might, there, there's certain tests, certain movements that we put people through <coughs> that helps us give us a diagnosis of, of what they're dealing with. So, Medicine today, a lot of it has gone. Anyone here had an MRI done before? Yeah. X rays? Probably a lot of you have gotten injured. So, <clears throat> those are all great things. We, we need to do x rays to rule out um, fractures, serious things when there's trauma. Um, MRIs are not cheap. Anyone know what an MRI costs? Probably about $2,500. So that's just to get a diagnosis of what is wrong with you. That so doesn't help you heal. I have a question. So I've heard there's a, a clinic in Appleton yep. where, they, where you can get cheaper MRIs. Correct. Is this a thing? Is, Correct. Are they legit or is this like out of some guy's van or something? No, they're legit. And, and I don't know if, actually I don't even know if that <coughs> is still operating. I heard rumors that they weren't. But okay. yeah, you can go and find lower cost MRIs. And, okay. and those are, I think, around the six or $700 range. Okay. They're harder to find in more sure. bigger cities. Um, there is some difference in quality of MRIs, believe it or not. So if a surgeon's going to want to readily visualize a certain area, like the shoulder sometimes sure. is tough, they may not get the best of visualization there. Okay. So, so one of the things we use is our hands and just our minds in terms of, okay, this is how you heard it, this is what I'm seeing, 
this isn't going to require surgery, so let's do some therapy on it. That's, that's where we can kind of, in terms of the outpatient orthopedic world, we can help save on some costs. But you know, more and more insurance companies are saying, you can't get the MRI until you try therapy. Right. Or you yeah. can't get surgery until you try six weeks of therapy. That's what they're doing with back surgeries, because they find the results are about equal. And not everybody needs to go right into surgery. We can heal somebody from a back injury without <coughs> surgery lots of the time. So that's where we kind of see physical therapy as a lower cost option to some of those things. But once we do our evaluation, we kind of come up with a treatment plan. What kind of things do we need to work on? Is it getting your range of motion back? Is it stiffness in a joint? Is it making you stronger? Um, is it changing how you sit at a desk, changing how you sit in a chair, changing how you do your job? So we kind of approach it from several different areas. We, we do different things to help relieve pain. We use something called modalities. Um, that's using um, ultrasound electric stem to help decrease muscle tone. One of the newer things in therapy is something called dry needling. Anyone hear of that before? Okay, so it, it, it's not acupuncture, but similar idea. We stick a, a needle into a tense muscle, and it helps to get the muscle to relax. It's not as painful as it sounds, um, and it actually works really well in certain areas of the body. Um, so once we develop that treatment plan, we go over the patient with the patient um, what kind of things we're going to do. And we typically will see people from anywhere from two times a week for four weeks to, if they're surgical, they might be with us for four to five months. Um, some of the surgeries, like an ACL, for example, we have to follow them a lot longer. Some people with total knee replacements, it's a lot longer treatment duration. Anyone here about a PT assistant before? So they're kind of they're a level of below therapists. I, I don't cover them a lot in this talk. Um, they can't do an evaluation. So if you're a new patient coming into my clinic, a physical therapist assistant cannot do an evaluation. They can't do all this test. They can't come up with what we call a treatment plan. Um, uh, briefly on physical therapy assistants, their program I believe is still a two-year program, but they've looked at changing to a four-year bachelor's degree. Um, the income is probably about 40 to 50 percent less than what a therapist makes. So kind of talked already about the um, evaluation. Um, we, do, we do see patients in our clinic 45 to 60 minutes. It varies by location and which setting you're in, and I'll get into that in a little bit. Um, my therapists average about 9 to 11 patients a day. So, patient every 45 minutes, take a lunch, we get cancellations, things like that. But it's pretty, pretty fast paced. Um, progress is monitored regularly. So, we need to justify more than ever to insurance companies that the patient seeing us is getting value for what they're, they're coming to therapy for. Um, we, we find that insurance companies are more or less in control of a, a lot more of some of the medical decisions that are made. Uh, so I might see a patient and think, well, I'm going to need to see him for probably a month and a half, and the insurance company will say, well, we're going to give you six visits instead of 12 visits. And so they kind of determine some of those things in terms of how, long, how frequently we can see them. Um, insurance is one of the big challenges we have in our field, and, and I think anyone in the medical field will say that right now. Um, they're just watching expenses. Anyone that carries insurance knows that insurance costs keep going up and up every year. So that's one of the things we really try and help control. So different therapy work settings. So I've already told you I've been in nursing home, home health, hospital, uh, rehab centers, school systems, outpatient clinics, on-site employer clinics, sports teams. I mean, that, that's just a few. I'm sure there's others that I missed in there. Those are the majority of them, and I'm kind of going to explain each one and, and kind of what our role can be in each, each kind of setting. So nursing homes and home health, uh, we're, we're primarily dealing with an older population. So uh, I'm sure a lot of you have had an experience where maybe a grandparent or a family member or a friend of a family member that has maybe had a stroke or some sort of event that had them uh, go into a nursing home. Uh, therapist's role in that is, is really trying to just get them back to the basics. So can they get out of bed on their own? Can they walk down the hall on their own? Can they stand long enough to prepare a meal? 
Um, can they be safe when they walk outside in the community? So that's really our role, and it's really the focus. So we, we just call it functional or activities of daily living. Um, all different types of diagnoses can be seen in a nursing home. So some total drug patients, we don't see as many of them, but if you get a knee replacement, a hip replacement, they may need to go to a rehab center or a nursing home for a while. Um, some are just generalized weakness. We all know about COVID and some of the effects people have with that. Um, now more than ever, we've seen in home health realm is they're trying to get people discharged at home, but they're so weak that they need more care. So that's where um, generalized weakness comes in. Strokes, <clears throat> some people that just have a medical event that keeps them hospitalized. Um, most of the time, Medicare and Medicaid are the primary payers. So again, there's because of that payer source, there's restrictions. So if somebody goes into a nursing home for an injury to rehab, they have 90 days where they get payment from Medicare. After that 90 days is when it becomes a lot more messy. So we are limited a little bit how long we'll see people. Um, what else? This is an area where um, therapists are not quite as attracted to as the nursing home. That's where there's, there's a lot of jobs out there for nursing homes. Um, typically the pay is higher for therapists as well there. Um, hospitals and rehab centers. So these are more acute illnesses or injuries. So. Um, somebody that just had a knee replacement might be in the hospital for two or three days. Hospital stays, they try to keep patients not in the hospital long. It's very expensive to be in a hospital. It costs thousands of dollars a night. So most of the time as a therapist, again, we're coming in, we're doing some short walking activities. We're showing them how to get out of bed. We're showing them a few exercises in terms of strengthening. But again, the focus is getting them home. Or if they can't go home, they're going to go to that next place, which is a nursing home. <coughs> There are some rehab centers that are actually within uh, a hospital, so Aspirus has one, for example. Uh, a rehab center is more intense, so they'll get therapy three hours minimal a day. So that means they might see the physical therapist twice, they might see an occupational therapist twice, and a speech pathologist. So it's very intense, um, but again, very simplistic. We just want these patients to function, to either go home or the next place if they need to be. Um, in a hospital, three to four days, and we'll just see them for that time. I, I, when I worked in the hospital, we'd see people two days. We'd go in, show them how to walk with the walker, show them how to walk with the crutch. Next day, we'd be making sure that they're safe to go home with that device. In the rehab setting, uh, it can be as little as one week. Some of them can be up to three months. More the, the longer term in there might be somebody that has like a spinal cord injury. They need, again, intensive, intensive rehab but all different types of patients. In the hospital and rehab centers, you can have people that are on the younger scale, depending on their injuries, or and on the older side of things. Any questions so far? <clears throat> School systems. So, like I said, I've, I've never really done pediatrics. It, it just wasn't my area of interest. Everybody's different. Um, but there's therapists in the school systems. I don't know, I'm, I'm assuming you have one here at one cell west. <coughs> What's that? A, a school physical therapist? Uh, I, it's probably not just at West, okay. but there, there's probably a traveling one. Okay. It's multiple schools. So this can start as easy, early as um, 4K, um, go all the way through 12th grade. It's uh, dealing more with some de developmental disabilities. Um, Focus is really on school-related activities. Um, it is also work on some home functional things, but Typically, these patients are seen over a long period of time, hired by the school district to provide the services. So um, it's harder in some rural areas to find a therapist. That's why I'm not surprised if that person does travel around. It all depends on the number of, of students that need to be seen. Um, nice thing I've always thought about this is you get your summers off. So um, it, it's these jobs aren't as usually the people that get into the school programs and into pediatrics. It's one of the few realms that you can work in pediatrics. Um, pediatrics, unfortunately, just the way the system is set up, a lot of um, kids with dis 
uh, developmental disabilities um, are covered by Medicaid. So, for example, I've, I've got a niece that has severe autism, and all of her services are through Medicaid. So it's, you don't find a lot of outpatient clinics that are seeing just kids because it's not reimbursed well. <clears throat> On-site employer clinics. Um, so this is kind of like the new thing that is coming to healthcare. And you may have some parents that may work at a factory or workplace that have it, um, but doing on-site healthcare. So they, they hire a company to come in and provide, whether it be a, a nurse practitioner, a physical therapist, to, to pay that person directly versus going through a health system. So um, one of the examples, uh, and that is Green Hack. So they have a company called QuadMed. And what QuadMed does is they come in and they bring a nurse practitioner. So if you are a family member, if an employee or a family member has a sore throat, they can go there and get free care for that. They do the same thing with therapy. Um, whereas if they have an employee that hurt themselves, whether it be on the weekend or at a job, that they can go there and get therapy for, for basically almost no cost to the employee. That's kind of the motivation. But the reduction in cost of the employer's insurance plan is significant, probably more than 50%. Um, <clears throat> most of these are orthopedic injuries, so sprains, strains, things like that. Um, usually there's no billing to insurance. So as, as a therapist, that's somewhat attractive because we deal with insurers that are saying, you oh, can only see this person for this many visits. And you're dealing with, as a therapist too, there's a certain number of patients we want to see as therapists to, to make it financially worthwhile. In this case, the therapist has just paid a straight hourly rate. So it makes it um, sometimes a little less pressure of a situation. Outpatient clinic. So this is the type of clinic I work in. Um, my wife, by the way, is a physical therapist as well. She works in an outpatient clinic. Um, this can be orthopedic or neurological injury. Team. As an outpatient clinic, we see just about anything. So we're seeing the people that went home from the hospital. We're seeing the people that went home from the nursing home and now need more care. Or we're seeing just the person who just got injured on the weekend or injured on the job, whatever it may be. Um, all different population ages. So, so we see in our clinic, um, we'll see orthopedic injuries and kids. That's, that's not a problem. It's just when it's that developmental issues, we don't uh, specialize in that. Um, but we see people that have knee replacements, hip replacements, shoulder surgery, back surgeries, or just your plain injuries. We'll see all of that. Um, our clinic doesn't see neurological as much. We don't see strokes, and it's just because I'm a believer that um, we're not specialized enough to do that at our clinic, so we typically don't see that. Um, but we see athletes as well. Uh, this is kind of where the, the big push is always as, as a new grad. A lot of the therapists, this is the clinic they want to work in. Um, what really drew me to this is I like the challenge it presents every day. So every day, it's, I can have two patients that just had a total knee replacement done on the same exact day, and one is doing great and the other one's struggling. And I like that challenge of trying to figure out, okay, how am I going to get this patient to do this or that? And try and get them to be at the same place where they're supposed to. I also